West Streeting today unveiled Labour's plan to overhaul the NHS by using the private sector to cut waiting lists. Now, speaking to GB News earlier, he warned that the service won't get any extra funding without major reform. I know that the NHS could do with investment, but under a Labour government, all of that uh, extra investment would be linked to reform. Personally, I don't think that spending vast amounts of taxpayers' money and getting really bad outcomes for patients and a bad service for our country is anything to boast about. Right, but just bear with us on this, because we think we have found quite a gaping flaw. All right, so despite Streeting's claims that Labour will use taxpayer cash wisely, social care providers and think tank experts have all been lining up to warn that the party's plans to give trade unions the power to bargain for social care workers' pay could cost the taxpayer billions. So under the plans, state-backed negotiations would take place between the trade unions and social care providers. I'm joined now by the former editor of The Sun, Calvin McKenzie. Calvin, I do not understand how both of these things can be true. West treating, talking about privatisation, talking about middle-class lefties holding the party back, and at the same time, Labour apparently looking to give power to the unions to negotiate NHS pay rises. Well, it... it like most things that um, either Starmer or now Streeting says, uh, the numbers don't add up. It is impossible... Social, the social issue is massive in our country. Brown tried to fix it. That didn't work. Cameron tried to fix it. This is like 20 or 30 years. It would literally cost tens of billions. So every time you hear that it's not going to cost you any more money, just remember that because post November the 14th, everything will cost money. And the issue with the idea that the trade union movement, who, as we've now seen with the railways, as we've now seen with junior yeah. doctors, don't give a monkey stuff about anybody. They don't give a st stuff about your mum. They don't give a stuff about the commuter. The idea that they will be able to shove a social pay premium into their negotiations fills me and must fill all your viewers the, with the, complete the, horror. The cynic in me would say that they've done this quite cleverly. On the same day that they've put West Streeting before the cameras talking about middle class lefties and the NHS and using the private sector, actually the other thing they've done is to say we're going to massively empower the trade unions and they're going to be negotiating pay offers, which, let's be honest, that's only going to go one way and that's up for the taxpayer, isn't it? Is that the real Labour Party, do you think, or is it West Streeting? <clears throat> Uh, well, I'd be fascinated. West Streeting is often tipped as the next but one leader. Yeah. OK. Uh, the only thing I know about politics is who is ever tipped to be leader eventually gets slung out. So uh, look, look forward to Streeting for a little while. He'll, he'll be gone in a while. But one of the problems that the country faces is we have no money. So the people yeah. know this. And so Labour play to this. We're not going to cost you any money. That is wholly and completely untrue. But when they come in with the 200-seat majority, they say, yeah. oh, we didn't realise that there was such a hole and we're now going to put up the money. So they will not be able to do anything like they say that they will without the support of the unions. And now apparently they're thinking of giving the unions power over pay rises. I mean, I find that absolutely... Well, uh, also, also, some, some of the ideas, if you're in small type of business and you now get told that anybody you take on mm. gets the automatic right from day one to say, oh, I don't want to work in the factory, I want to work from home, you are going to have to give it to them. Honestly, yeah. I would say anybody in small business, if you're watching now, whatever you do, don't vote Labour. Well, obviously, Labour will deny all of that, as you would expect, but we do await, well, no, them. It, we do await their manifesto. But look, this is another issue that I want to get you on. So it's only been one week since Scotland's hate crime bill came into force. Already, the police have been overwhelmed by around 8,000 complaints. Football fans watching Rangers draw with Celtic on Sunday were the latest to fall foul of the rules. Police Scotland are now investigating complaints about the match, some of which were made by people watching on television. So people saw the game on TV and reported some members of the crowd for hate crimes. I am not making this up. That is despite Scottish First Minister Hamza Yusuf giving this assurance last week. We've got with the Hate Crime Act, with the new offences that are created, is a very high criminal threshold. So we have behaviour has to be threatening or abusive and intended to stir up hatred. So I've got every confidence in Police Scotland's ability to police on the back of an old firm game, just as they have done for many years previously. But check this out. The police have faced accusations they're picking and choosing which cases to probe after it claims a woman who complained about an image of the Star of David merged with a swastika with the words Zionism equals Nazism, was told that it wouldn't be investigated under the hate crime laws because she isn't Jewish. Kelvin, has the SNP's hate crime bill descended into a complete farce? 
Well, what they're saying now is that a whole load of um, charges or complaints that we think are important, sexual complaints, fraud, violence, are now not being prosecuted. Why? Because their officers are spending all their time following up hate issues. What was clear about what Yusuf said last week, actually, was very easy. He said, look, the truth about the matter is, I am an example of somebody who gets a lot of hate, yeah. and this, this bill effectively will stop that. So it's about, it is about him. Yeah, and can I just get this now? This is an yeah. update, a live update yeah. for you. Hate crime reports in Scotland are on course now to outnumber all other offences put together. Mm. That has just come through to me mm. here, and the police have vowed to investigate every single one of them. Mm. It's a joke. It's a joke. So if you have your... There's a break-in at your house, you have your bike stolen, your car stolen, uh, you, you know, uh, somebody is sexually assaulted, that get, will go to the back of the queue, and what will go to the front of the queue is somebody says something rather nasty about Yusuf. It is a scandal. And this is... So, we, honestly, who would want... What a shocking worldwide PR this is for Scotland. Yeah. If you are Scottish, you would simply hold your head in your hands and say, how did this happen? And it happened because they have a leader like Yusuf. Everybody said he was useless, Yusuf. Actually, he's turned out to be much nastier than that. Well, Calvin, thank you very, very much.